Hi guys, this is Andrew with rockclass101.com and in this week's ukulele lesson, we're gonna be learning a two chord jam. So this is actually the second song that I've written that uses just two chords. If you wanna check out the first one, you can click this link right here. I'll also put the link in the description box below. Now this lesson is gonna be just a standalone, we're gonna learn the song. If you check out the first two chord jam lesson that I wrote, it's a double lesson. It not only teaches you how to play the tune, but it also teaches you how to jazz up your rhythm playing. So to explain that further, I think we should give you kind of a, a situation to think about. If you were in a jam situation with somebody and you're playing a song that uses two chords, there's a lot of Grateful Dead tunes that are like that. If you spend the entire song just strumming two chords, it gets really boring after a few minutes, right? So that previous two chord lesson teaches you a lot of ways to make your playing a lot more interesting. And the end result is that you're adding to the music. Now, I don't wanna give you the ways that it, it does that and what it teaches you, because I want you to check it out. So if you're curious, go check out that other lesson. But as far as this two chord jam is concerned, this is number two. This one is just a groovy, uh, kind of sounding piece. It's very bluesy in the A melody, and then the B melody has a cool vamp on one of the two chords. And I think this song is a really good standalone solo performance piece. So really fun to play. Now, with that in mind, as far as this lesson is concerned, we're gonna be learning the entire song in this video. If you wanna get the tabs to print off and follow along with, you can do so by clicking this link or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for two chord jam number two. So this is number two. Now also on that page will be the on-screen tab viewer. So this is a really good feature where you can hit play, you can watch that tab scroll across in real time, you can highlight bars, loop sections, slow it down to any speed you wish, just a great asset in learning this song that much easier. All right, so let's go ahead and jump into learning this tune. A couple of things we wanna talk about right off the bat. The first one is the big elephant in the room. It's a low G song. So you have to play this one on a low G. It's just not gonna sound right on a high G. So grab the low G for this tune. Now the second thing is the right hand. So what's happening with our right hand? Well, most of the song can be performed with a three finger approach. So that means thumb gets string four and three, index would get string two, middle would get string one. That works perfect for the B melody. For the A melody, what I do is a bit of a hybrid. And instead of these three fingers, I'm actually using these three. This is my preferred playing uh, style and playing method. And again, that would mean thumb gets string four and three, but middle would get string two, ring would get string one. For the A melody, sometimes I use the middle finger to play string three. So I kind of do a bit of a hybrid. I break out of the rule of thumb, of thumb, thumb, middle, ring. Now, you can even play the entire A melody with just the thumb as well. So there's a lot of ways to interpret this in terms of right hand playing style. So I'm gonna leave it up to you to pick what's best for you. Now, with those two things in mind, let's jump into talking about this song. So it's two chords. What are the two chords? It's an A chord, just the stock A major that we all know and love, to a G chord, and we're actually playing it as a G5. So we're not playing string one. So if you make the basic G chord, just get rid of string one. You can even play it as an open A if you want, in turn making it a G sus two. But this song is literally just going, for the A melody, it's going A, G, A, G, A, G, and then in measure four, stays on A. So basically, if we were to strip away all of the music, A, G, bar two, bar three, bar four, just A by itself. So that's it, that's the whole song. Well, that's the A melody. That's the whole song for the A melody. So it's literally that simple of a piece. So let's go ahead and jump into actually learning how to play it. And to do this, I think uh, what I'll do is I'll just play a little bit so to give us a context of what the performance sounds like and then we'll break it down bar by bar. Okay, so there's a good little gist of our first four measures. And the big thing too I didn't point out is that that A 
is going to be for the first beat and a half. The G happens on the end of two. So you wanna keep that in mind. And you can see that as we put up the tab right there, you can see that the change to G happens on the end of two. A lot of times it's always split even where it's beat one and beat three, but we have on the end of two for this one. So keep that in mind too. Now there's two ways that you can approach learning this tune. If I play just this first measure, that's what it sounds like. You can look at the rhythm up top for the standard notation and you can think of it as one e and two end and four e and a. So you can think of it as that rhythmic hits one e and two end and four e and a, right? Or you can think of it as playing by ear. If you can sing it, you can play it. Da 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 ba ba da da da. So the big thing is to get that groove in your head. Da 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 ba ba da da da. So get that stuck in your head. And again, if you can sing it, you can play it. So measure one slow. Sounds like that. So let's break it down. So we know we're playing out of A for the first part. We're gonna start with a hammer on. So open C, hammers to the first fret. Then add the middle finger as if it was the stock A to the second fret of string four. So you have hammer four. At this point, pluck the open A, and then we're gonna drop down to this G5. So for this G5, what I'm gonna use is the second and the ring finger, just because it's already in place there. So right, it wouldn't make sense for me to go first and third, right? Just, it's creating more work for the left hand than what needs to be done. So second and third. So we have hammer, fourth string, first string, drop down to the G5, pluck string three and two. Now you can pluck it just as a regular note, but if you wanna add a little bit of that bluesy spice element to it, what you can do is you can tug on the notes a little bit. And when you tug on the notes, you're just pushing up. It's the same concept as if you were doing a bend, right? When you bend the string, you keep pressure held down and you pull the string either up, oops, that direction is down, either down or you can go up. This one, we're going to go up, but we're not bending. It's not gonna look like this crazy stretch, right? You can see how far the string drops down. We're not doing anything like that. We're simply going to push the notes slightly up. And you can hear that uh, the pitch slightly rises. So it goes slightly sharp. So instead of flat, right, we are creating the most tiny micro bend that goes so if I play the difference between flat versus raising it a little bit you can hear that the difference is so tiny it's the equivalent of if you add a dash of salt to your food right it's just the tiny it's like it's like that salt guy, right? <laughs> salt Bay or whatever his name is. You add a tiny little sprinkle of, uh, of salt and it just, it's like the little kick that you need. That's all it is. So that's optional. So if you wanna add that, go for it. If you don't, just play it as a normal pluck. But let's see if we can try that together. So we have one E and two and, okay? And this is gonna get held into beat three. So you wanna hold it for an entire beat. So let's try that together. Three, four. Nice. Now, as you pluck those notes, you're holding into beat three. Then on the end of three, you're gonna play the open E, and then we're gonna do this cool little pentatonic pull off. Okay, so it's gonna be with the middle finger, second fret of string three, pulls off to the open C, and the same thing happens on string four. Second fret pulls off to the open G. Ba -da -da -da. So string three, string four. Okay, if we put it together, that gives us the entire measure. Okay, let's see if we can try together. Three, four, one E and two and three and four E and a. Okay, one more time slower. Da, 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 ready, go. Nice. 
Nice. Now let's go ahead and jump into measure number two. If you look at the tab, you can see it starts out the same for the first half. So you're playing the exact same thing, and that, again, that G5 lingers into the third beat. Now here's the only change that happens to end this measure. Lift the middle finger up, we're going to put the pinky underneath the ring finger. So keep the ring where it's at. So you have third on the second string, third on the first string. And we're just going to pluck it twice, string one and two. And then you can see that we have a little muted hit to add a little cool percussive sound to this measure. If I play measure two in its entirety, that will make a lot more sense. You can hear ba -ba, ba -ba. So we have a cool little percussive hit at the end. But let's omit the percussive hit for right now. Let's see if we can add those little plucks at the end. So here we go, from the beginning of second measure. Three, four. Nice, and again, ready, go. Nice. Now to add the percussive thing, all you're gonna do is you're gonna lift pressure up and you're just gonna to touch the strings, same as if you were doing any kind of muted strum. But I'm just gonna target my right hand to go down up for the bottom two strings. And that's it, just a normal strum, just targeting these bottom two strings. If you hit all four strings, that's fine. But my playing style, I just usually target the bottom couple strings. So if we add that to the mix, we have three, four, Okay, one more time, slower. Three, four. Nice, if we backtrack, let's try one into two. One, two, ready, go. Nice. Now as we go into measure number three, it's going to be identical to measure number one. So you're not doing anything different. You're playing measure number one to a T again. So we're gonna skip over that and go into measure number four. Now measure number four is gonna sound like this. Okay, so let's break it down. And then we're gonna talk about the transition of three to four. That's an area that I really want you guys to focus on in your practicing. But measure number four by itself starts out the same as the other one. So we have open to the first hammer on, then to the second fret. So all of that is the same, but we're gonna follow it up with a slap. So just a percussive slap. And for this one, I actually like to come down with an open palm. So my hands are sticking out instead of a closed kind of claw shape that if you followed my lessons before, that's usually what I do. I like to come down with this open because it just mutes everything and just makes sure that everything is silent. And it also leaves our thumb perfectly in place to just vamp on this second fret. So if you look at the tab, you can see hammer, two, slap, two, slap, two, two. It just plays that second fret on string four quite a few times, right? So we have hammer, two, slap, two, slap, two, two. Okay, let's just try that by itself. Ready, go. Hammer, two, slap, two, slap, two, two. Then you can see the ending is that same little percussive strum. So let's see if we can add that as well. Three, four. Now backtracking to uh, talking about the transition of going three into four, and this was actually the same transition of going one into two. So if you think of the ending of measure one and measure three, they're identical, right? You have that pull off and then it repeats into the little hammer on part. That's probably an area that I would practice. Four e and a hammer two, four e and a hammer two. So you're literally just vamping on the little ending section. It's kind of a finger frenzy, not a big one, but it's a good area to practice to get the timing nice and smooth as you transition measure to measure. So I just want to point that one out. But let's do this now. Let's try 
three into four, and then we'll try one through four. So three into four, here we go. Three, four. Nice. Now one through four. Three, four. Here's the thing, guys. When you finish that fourth measure, that is going to be considered ending number one, okay? So that means that you're going to go back and you're gonna play measure one, two, and three all again. So you're playing. Right, but in terms of the music, it was technically five, six, and seven, right? Then you go into this measure, which is ending number two. And if you look at ending number two, you can see that there's only one difference, the very last note. That very last note becomes the first fret of string four. So this ending number two is identical to measure number four on the tab. It's just changing up the very last note. So you have hammer, two, slap two, slap, two, two, one. Just walk down with the first finger. Because as we go into melody B, we're starting out with the open G. So it's a nice transition. If I play the second ending into melody B. Right, it's a cool little chromatic walk down to take us into the B melody. So let's try this second ending. It's very simple. Here we go, three, Four. Nice. Now, as we go into melody B, let me play a little bit of it and then we'll break it down and we'll talk about the harmony because it changes for this one. So there's the first few bars throughout this uh, melody B. The first thing is that we're playing all out of a G chord. We're basically just vamping on different versions of G. So we have the stock G7 that we all know and love, but as we go up higher, we have a different voicing for the G7. And as we go up higher again, we have a different voicing for a, a variation on a standard G. And basically, if you checked out that first lesson that I, linked for the two chord jam. That was one of the things that it taught you was uh, how to play different voicing of the same chord in different spots of the neck. So what does that mean? Well, let's take the C major chord as a, it's a good example. If we were, if everyone was playing a C major chord here, you could take the G chord shape, play it up here, and it becomes a C chord. If you play that on top of somebody else who's playing the basic C chord here, it creates a beautiful harmony and really adds to the music instead of everyone having the exact same sound that this creates. This creates a higher voice, much prettier, and layers on top of it to create a nice little harmony. Now that is a concept that was taught in the two chord jam number one, but it's really a standalone concept in and of itself. It's called the caged method. In a nutshell, it teaches you how to take those basic chord shapes, move them up the neck till they become other chords. So if you want to check out uh, that in more detail, you want to learn that method, super valuable to learn. I'll put a link in the description box below so you can check out that lesson as well. But anyways, backtracking to melody B, let's put up the tab for the first measure. This is measure six, six on the tab. And it sounds like this. The first thing you'll notice too is that it's all eighth notes. So keep that in mind. We're keeping the rhythm completely steady. Sounds like this. So it's very simple. Make the G7 chord, and I want you to start with the ring finger up. So we're gonna go four, three, pluck one and two, four, take the pinky, put it down on the third fret of string one, pluck one and two, string four by itself, then get rid of the pinky, make the basic G7 so the ring goes down on the second fret of string number one, pluck one and two, and then open G. So you can see for the most part, we're just 
bouncing between plucking one and two and the open G. You'll see that throughout these, the next few bars is that that's pretty much the theme of what's happening. So you have four, three, pluck, four, pluck, four, pluck, four. Okay, so four, three, pluck, open, four, pinky down, pluck, four, ring down, pluck, four. So let's try to get it really simple. Here we go, three and four and one and two and three and four and nice. Going into measure number two, we're going to move this G7 up to a higher voicing of a G7. So to do this, all we're going to do is we're going to take these two fingers, move them up to the fifth fret. So you have five on string three, five on string one, and your index finger is going to go on the third fret of string two. So again, still with the open G, but you want to practice that transition, the stock G7 to this higher voicing. So you can see those two fingers lead and your index follows, but it's now one fret separating the fingers, whereas they were next to each other, right? So there's one fret in between for this higher voicing. So keep that in mind as well. You can always put a uh, timing concept as you work on building the muscle memory for the transition. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. It's a good way to practice uh, getting muscle memory down. Okay, so backtracking, let's go ahead and play throughout this measure. Now, let's make the G7, the variation on the G7. We're gonna strum for the first hit from three down, hit the open G. Then we're going to this other variation of a G chord. So to do this, I want you to take the index finger lay it flat on the third fret strings one and two, and the middle finger is going to be the fourth fret of string three. And then again, we have the open G. So you wanna practice this transition as well. So strum four, lift the ring finger up, we don't need it. You're going to move the middle down a half step and then lay flat for a partial bar on the third fret strings one and two for the index finger. Okay, and you can pluck this one. Now, you're probably wondering why I put the four in a parenthesis on string three, because it's optional. So it's up to you if you want to uh, pluck three, one, two, and three, or if you want to pluck just string one and two. So I'll leave it up to you. Both sound equally great. Okay, so let's just try that. So we have one and two and, all right, together, three, four. Pretty simple, right? Now at this point, what you're going to do is you're gonna keep those fingers held down, but this one, you're going to pivot up. So here's the first joint, right? I want you just to basically move at that first joint and your finger's gonna come up more so on the fingertip. And that's gonna allow you to pluck the open A plus the fretted third fret of string two. So you can see that as I play through the first part, that joint, the first joint, pops up and allows me to move my finger up. Now it's very important that you pop it back down in place because if you look at the last hit, it's three, three on string one and two again. So that's a little bit of a tricky element that's happening with the left hand right here. So you wanna take this measure slow. Strum, four, pluck, four, pivot up at that first joint, pluck, four, pivot down, pluck, four. So just work on that one nice and slow, hit pause on the video, it's a little bit tricky. But once you have it down, let's try that measure together. Three, four, strum, four, pluck, four, pluck, four, pluck, four. And if we backtrack, let's try that six into the seventh measure. And here we go, three, four. So one thing you can take away too is that you see most of it is just the vamp between the pluck and the open G. So that makes the right hand really easy to memorize. So at the beginning of the measure, it's, it's a little bit different. Four, three, pluck, four, pluck, four, pluck, four, strum, four, pluck, four, pluck, four, pluck, four. But then the rest of it is pretty much just, you know, strum or pluck, four, pluck, four, pluck, four, and so forth. So the right hand's pretty simple to uh, get memorized. Now, as we look at the next measure, measure number eight, it's again, the same thing we saw in the A melody. It's identical to measure six. 
Okay, so just playing out of that G7. So we're gonna skip over that. And as we go into the next measure, this is going to be ending number one. So it's got that same form that the melody A had. So here's what ending number one sounds like. So cool little uh, uh, movement that's happening. So again, we're starting on a variation of the G chord. Now, we know from the previous variation that we did when we did this one, the G7-1, it was 5-3-5. Five, five. You're going to take that same shape and just move everything up a whole step. So you're going to be 7-5-7. Seven, seven. And again, the G string will be open. So that's going to give us this first chord hit for this measure. So I want you to strum three down, hit the open G, then move it back down a whole step to G7-1 and I want you to pluck either string one and two, or if you want, string one, two, and three, and then the open G. So with this one, let's just try that first half of the measure. So we have this G, strum, four, pluck, four. Let's just try that. Three, four, strum, four, pluck, four. Nice. Now, to end it, you're going to transition back to flat with the middle finger on the fourth fret of string three. So you're going to pluck that, hit the open G, and then transition back to 5-3-5, five, five, the G7-1. Okay? So again, chord shapes that we've already tackled, we just have to memorize when they happen. So the entire measure, strum, four, pluck, four, pluck, four, four. Okay? So just memorize the variations of the G chord that we've played and know when it happens and let's see if we can try this bar together. Three, four, strum, four, pluck, four, pluck, four, pluck, four. Nice. Now if we backtrack, let's try the last two measures together. So eight into nine. Three, four, So the hard part here is probably the transition of the jump. So you've got to move all the way up the neck to 7-5-7. Seven, seven. So you may want to just practice that little ending transition. But let's try this. Let's try the four measures together. So 6, 7, 8, and 9. Here we go. 3, 4. So that's going to repeat again. So you're going to jump back and you're going to play measure six, seven, and eight one more time. But then you're going to jump into ending number two, which looks and sounds like this. So a cool little ending for this section. So it starts out the same. You're going to 7-5-7. Seven, seven. You're going to strum 3 down, hit string 4, move down to that G7-1, pluck 4. And then here, keep the index where it's at. Take the middle and ring, move down a half step. So you can see you're basically playing the G7 chord, but up a whole step. And when we go up a whole step, it becomes an A7. So I want you to pluck 1 and 2. I'd recommend 1 and 2 just for this. But if you want, you can pluck all three. But to me, one and two sounds the best to my ear. So I'm gonna pluck one and two, go down a half step, pluck, down a half step, G7, pluck. So I ba, ba, ba. So if I put that measure together, I had one and two and three and four. Okay? So not too, too hard. Let's see if we can try together. Three four, one, and two, and three, and four. So beat four is a whole beat. So keep it out for that whole note. I'm sorry, <laughs> beat four. Uh, beat four is a quarter note, last one beat, not a whole, not four beats. My, <laughs> yes, <laughs> laughing at me because I'm calling it out wrong. But beat four is a quarter note. 
So that's basically it, guys. Um, because after you do that, you're going back into the A melody. And when you go back into the A melody, we're just going to play half of it. So we're just going to play four bars as we jump back into the A melody. So the A melody is going to be like this to end the song. And a cool little harmonic thing at the end. So the first three measures as you go back into A, they're identical. So all that's the same. The only thing that we have new to learn is the very last measure of the tune. So it's going to sound like this. Okay, so let's tackle that. So it starts with an open C, then we have 2 to 0 on string 4. It's a quick pull off. 1 and a. Uh, then go back down on the 2nd fret of string 4, then play the open C, then back down on the 2nd fret of string 3, and then the open E. So ba da 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 da. Okay, so we have O pull off two O two O. So let's try just that three, four. Okay, and then the last hit is just going to be harmonics on the twelfth fret. So natural harmonics from three down and you're gonna strum down. So if you're new for that technique, we have a mini course that teaches three ways to perform harmonics. So you can click that link to check it out. And it does teach this in uh, great detail as well. So if you're new to strumming multiple harmonics on that 12th fret, that course does teach this as well. But let's see if we can try that entire 14th measure together. Three, four. And that's it. So if I cycle through this A melody to end it, I have... So that's basically it, guys. So this song had a lot of repetition in it. So the first few measures of melody A and the first few measures of melody B got repeated, whereas the fourth measure got subbed out. So that makes this song so much easier to learn because there's less music to actually learn, you know? It doesn't change, it just repeats a lot. And that also helps to make it catchy. You know, this is a pretty catchy little tune, especially that A melody with the bluesy feel. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I do want to remind you that the uh, tabs are available if you want to print and keep for your records. You can do so by clicking this link or going to the site rockclass101.com and doing a search for two chord jam number two and don't forget too on that page is the really cool interactive tab player so you can hit play watch the tab scroll across in real time highlight bars loop sections slow it down all that fun jazz so again i hope you enjoyed uh, learning this tune go check out the first two chord jam if you want to get a little bit of uh, knowledge on what to do to jazz up your rhythm playing i'll put that link in the description box below as well so that one's really cool to learn too. So guys, again, I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.